she was responsible for coming up to the date. She checked the chamber schedule, every schedule she could check. Unfortunately, <laughs> she didn't look at the liking schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not going to sit here too long because I know my family will knock me over pretty soon. Don't worry, don't ask me. So I apologize for that. And I'll try and keep it brief. And some things are a touch tough, but I do want to say a little bit about me uh, so you know who I am. I am from Faribault. I was born and raised in Faribault. Uh, with a tidbit of information, my great grandparents uh, were born in River, not born and raised, but raised a family of 14 on a farm just south of Otana. And they were buried uh, about six blocks away at Sacred Heart uh, Cemetery. So I do have roots in Otana. And I want to tell you the people that I've met in Otana through Pam have been phenomenal. I know fairly well, I've been there forever. Uh, it's, it's not that difficult, but to come to a community that you don't know that well, other than I know Tim Meyer, I know Eric Setti, and I know a few others here in the community, but to, Really, the way you guys have welcomed me in this community has been phenomenal, and I can't say enough how, how nice it is to get that warm welcoming. It's been wonderful. Again, thank you for all those people, and Pam is the best back there. I'm going to say it time and time again. Uh, if I win, it's because of her. I'll lose something. <laughs> As Mike said, uh, you know, just a little bit. Uh, my number one prayer is being a dad. I have two kids, 17 and 15, and I love them dearly. Great kids. And, uh, get emotional right now. Uh, great kids. Uh, I'm not going to miss a football game for my son. We're in the middle of election season, but I'm not going to miss it. It's a senior year, uh, so I'm not going to miss that. Uh, unfortunately, everyone hasn't beaten Otana in nine years. <laughs> and I got both towns in my district, and what do you think we do, but we beat Otana. So I apologize. It could have been a year. My son's in football, basketball, and baseball, and it is his senior year, so I'm, I'm stressed I'm going to make all his events this year during the campaign season. Um, so I'm going to do that. Uh, so I apologize if I miss a few things on Friday nights, but it is about him. Uh, my daughter is a sophomore in VA, and she understands a little bit that is crucial because she's only a sophomore, and then you know, I'll be there for junior and senior year. So uh, she also plays volleyball and basketball, so she's great in athletics. And, uh, and two great kids. I can't say enough about them. I'm very proud of them. Um, Next is my business, uh, MDC Real Estate. We're a commercial real estate firm in Faribault. And I have a family there. It's uh, MDC and Metcon companies. And I've been there for about 11 years, and I've learned a lot of great things on what to do in the community and be involved and work with economic development and try and push businesses to relocate to our area uh, and in the district. So uh, they've been phenomenal with that. Tom McDonough and Troy Zvinsky. Troy's back there. Tom couldn't make it this evening. But they've really taught me uh, what it is to be uh, involved in economic development and make our communities better and increase our tax base. And that's the big thing. And in doing that in commercial real estate, you listen to the industry owners, the business owners, and the residents. And, and what they really are frustrated with right now are the taxes. Taxes, Minnesota is the third highest tax state in the nation. We have a great quality of life, and I understand that. But we shouldn't be number three. We should be number 15 or 16 as far as I know. Number three is not acceptable. And that really is probably the biggest push that has pushed me to do this is, is that. I'll get into some other things later, but that's the biggest thing that pushed me. Um, I'm also mayor of Farrell. I've, it's been a tremendous experience to be the mayor of Farrell. Again, in a bipartisan way, it's really bringing people together to build a consensus and get things done. Uh, you obviously have feelings on this side, the right side, and the left side, but to bring those feelings together and get something done and stop that gridlock, and we've done that. I've been the mayor for eight years, and again, 2009 and 10, when the world stopped turning, the economy was down. We did pretty well. We, uh, we had to lay some people off because as industry has to lay people off, so does the city. We need to keep the taxes down for our community, and we did that. In that time, we, we brought new business to Faribault and saw business expansions that nobody else saw during that downtime. We had Sage Electrochromics in St. Cobain now that did a 357 thousand square foot addition. Uh, we've seen the wool mills reopen that I was involved with. It was, it was great in the down economy. We're seeing Faribault Foods now in the middle of $120 million expansion in Faribault. So we are doing some great things in Faribault. Uh, I have a great team there as far as the city. <coughs> people getting involved, so it's been wonderful. And we're, we're seeing economic development. Uh, also, uh, I've been involved in several other things. And I guess the biggest compliment I get is the mayor is that I'm, I'm engaged. And you can talk to me, approach me. You'll either see me at a sporting event or the supermarket or snowmobiling somewhere or on a golf course or maybe occasionally drinking a beer somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I, I like to be known to be approachable and a common, a common sense guy that's just an average guy that likes to get involved. And I think that's what I, I try and do. 
And I continue to do that when I get involved or get elected to the Senate. It's just being an average guy that's involved and wants to make the community better. I'm trying to abbreviate some of this, but I don't know if the Vikings game is probably going. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing that uh, I just talked about is how the campaign is going. People always ask that, how's it going? You know, some days I think it's going wonderful, and other days I think I'm 20 days behind. So I think that's pretty normal from what I've heard. So I think things are going good. Fundraising has been pretty good, or actually very good, I think, for, for what I'm doing. Uh, we had some great parades. We had some fun county fairs. We did some great meet and greets, and we're doing some door knocking. So it's been, been phenomenal. I've had great feedback from residents, so it's exciting to get that good feedback. I'm excited about that. Uh, my opponent's learning from us. Uh, I don't think she's ever had a billboard before. Now she has a billboard, so <laughs> never had a four eight sign. Now she has four eight signs. So uh, some of the fundraising events I just had one on Saturday, and, and I talked to the business owners, and she had come in the day before and said, "I understand John's having a fundraising event here tomorrow. Do you mind if I have one too?" And he said, "Well, no, you're going to have to talk to my partner about that one." So I'm not making that up. That's true. So she's actually, you know, doing a lot of things, and I think that the good thing is I think they're scared, and they know we got good following, and we see the signs, so. And I think they know, it, you know they're not doing as well as they should be. So hopefully I'll be a better fit for this district, so I'm glad about that. Um, they're going to outspend us, and just like they do at the Capitol. I, I mean, the money they're spending against me and trying to get her elected is phenomenal. I don't know how many radio ads you hear on the radio stations and how many flyers. I had one person say, you got five, five, flyers in one, in five flyers in five days. They just keep sending and sending and sending. So, uh, you know... We're going to try and be smarter with our money, just like our capital, use it wisely to get elected, so we're not going to just try and buy our way in. So that's the one thing we're trying to do. But obviously, we always still need help with that. So uh, we're doing good on money, but we can always use more. We really need to focus our attention on some advertising these last month, the last 36 days, as you said, to get elected. So I'm looking for help with that. And the biggest thing I can ask you is just get out, uh, you know, encourage my name, and Get people to know me, invite me to events where you think I can meet people that will help. That's the biggest thing. Uh, we have some lit drops and things going like that. You can talk to Pam Caesar back there. She's uh, uh, the pro of what we need to have left to do. Uh, we're trying to get out to all the events. Uh, we're trying to get into the debates and, and involved in all the debates and all those things. So we're really trying hard to get out there and really give it a last surge. So uh, very excited about it. Uh, I can't thank everybody enough who's been involved so far. And for those of you who want to continue to get involved and are getting involved. Uh, so thank you. If people ask you why, why should I vote for John Zinsky, I'm going to give you a couple reasons. There's a ton of things that I've you know, become more involved in than I was before, but the biggest thing is no new tax. We don't need a gas tax any higher than what we have. I see what it does to industry. I see what it does to industry and how it affects our, our construction prices and what you have to charge for a job and what people pay for. So we don't need any more gas tax. I think it's, it's great to go to the pump and pay $2 or $2.10. I think that's the way it should be. And that really helps the economy thrive. Um, I don't believe Minnesota has a problem with money. I just think we have a problem with how we're distributing money. We need to look at our prioritize our spending and see what we can spend smartly on. So that's really the big thing that I want to push. I, I, like I said, we have the money. We just need to distribute it better into better programs that make sense. Um, I want to help with the gridlock. As we've been mentioned, uh, as a city council member, as the mayor of doing that, I really try to bring both sides together and get a consensus to build uh, what we need to get done and get it done. And I think we've done pretty well with that. Uh, as I've heard from the community that I, we have done that, so that's a good thing. Uh, about education, uh, my kids obviously are in high school, so I want them to get educated better and in college. So not having them a huge, uh, huge debt when they get out of college is important to me. Um, also, the health care is a, a big thing. I've been door knocking, and the biggest thing I hear is health care. Yeah. It, it's just, it's, 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 I just wish they admitted that it's a failure because it's not working for every person I've talked to doesn't like it. There's not an employer out there that's happy with it. There's not an employee out there, and you're getting less service. So, we really need to re overhaul that and get something done smarter. So, I want to work on that as we get there. Uh, all kinds of other things, pro-life, agriculture, the veterans, the right to bear arms are all those things that are important to me. But my big thing has been when I mentioned it, so I want to thank you very much. And in closing, I want to say thanks to everybody, especially Mike McFadden, Rich Stanton, and Representative uh, Greg Davids for coming down this evening uh, to Otana. It's been phenomenal. It's been great to meet you guys and get to know a little bit better. Um, not any candidate can win, so we need to work it together, and we need to get the next six spots in the Senate and take control of the Senate so we can help out the House and get some things done. And in two years, we'll have another better option for our governor. So we're going to get it done, and we're going to win. So I want to thank you very much.